there's a trap right, right off the corner. Right nice. No, oh, that's a trout. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good start to the morning. Very well second cast or first cast for David. Is that your first cast? Second. Second cast on a rig out in Timbalier Bay. Ready to have a nice trout. Fish. Or do I have the motor? Do I have a fish? You don't have the motor. You got a motor trout. For the last couple summers, I've been targeting speckled trout along islands and jetties, maybe submerged islands, but I haven't been concentrating on rigs too much. So this year, I've decided to spend much more time fishing rigs and I know that's a really good summertime habitat for speckled trout. One of the things I've been learning this summer about rig fishing is that the trout can be right under the rig, right, and you have to cast in among the pilings or they could be out on the edge. Ah, that had to be a fish. Oh, that's there a good go. fish. <laughs> that's a good fish. That is. It's yeah. interesting how they hit that lure. So they're out here yeah, isn't that interesting? on the edge. Let's go back to yeah. Nice trout. Uh, keeper. No. That's a keeper. Oh probably not. Oh that's yeah, a, keeper. It's a keeper. There's often some shell pads around these rigs, and that's a really good habitat for trout. Uh, but they may be on the edge of that shell pad, and that shell pad could be out 50 to 100 feet from the edge all the way around. And so when I'm learning very much this summer that you've got to look for trout all across the whole area, the whole habitat that the rig creates. Where you like back up just anywhere on the There we go. That's a nice fish. Too. Ooh, sweet. That's a decent, oh yeah. That's nice, John. Oh yeah. That's a nice fish. Well, okay. I'm gone. No, we can't have that. But that one bump, I mean, this gentle, one. gentle. I just had it hit right here. And you may have seen my recent video on dolphins fishing around dolphins uh, that are on the rigs and how the speckled trout were pushed up, chased, basically chased fear uh, for fear of their lives underneath the rig by the dolphins and uh, and I and I talked about the approach there where you want to cast right up among the pilings but on a day like this there were very few dolphins around I think we saw maybe two dolphins the whole day and they really didn't affect our fishing much that I could tell uh, but the trout were off the rig in the shell pad quite a bit it's like they bump it bump it bump it and they were not quick to bite. The bite was off and very slow. And you know, one of our best bites, we initiated simply by dragging the bait very slowly through the shells uh, on the shell pad. And this was right on the bottom at about seven feet. And that action over time, over maybe 30 minutes of doing that and, and getting hits uh, and catching a few fish, we finally got them to light up, so it was a fish on every cast. Oh yeah, they're, they're different now. Oh, this is a good one. Sure sounds good now. Get my line out your way. Okay, I'm out of your way. Sounds good. Bigger one here. Yep. Nice trout. 
Uh, I have, in addition to my typical matrix shad on a uh, quarter to three eighth ounce jig head, I've been trying some pre-rigged swim baits. Oh, this is the rigged. dark oh, sleeper. Keeper on the dark sleeper. Wow, poetry. Poetry while fishing. <laughs> Ate that up. That'll make me borrow a pogey from you. A hoagie. Miller Pogi. Oh! That's a nice one. Good 15, Beautiful. 16. That looks like a 16. Oh, one lure per pack. Yeah, they're like five something. Holy Ooh. mackerel. But they got fish. They got fish, though. Is it in your. There we go. Trout. Oh yeah. Mine doesn't have a hook. Or does it yeah, come in? They have a hook. Don't get poked by it. It's exactly where you'd expect it to be. I don't even see it. It's there. That is crazy. This <laughs> odd looking bait is called the dark sleeper. The hook is inside this double fin. It's got a good quality hook, paddle tail. Uh, I'm not sure what the color of this is called, but this is a 3 8 ounce. Looks like it's made in Japan. I'm guessing it's got it's got a lot of Japanese characters on it. But uh, they were on it was on fire. It's kind of a goby or a little maybe kako minnow looking thing. I saw Chris Bush talking about this, and I walked into an out of state tackle store, really a bass store, and there they were on the shelves. So I grabbed a few. There really weren't many there. They had about 20 different pins, and they were all empty except two of them, so I didn't have much choice, but this is a really good color, it looks like, for us. I've also been experimenting with a product called Fish Bites, and, and it's just a packet of baits uh, made by Fish Bites. This is actually the uh, Easy Shrimp, so it's just a, a shrimp flavor, apparently, and you just cut off a little piece of it and you put it on your hook. So it's just like a little bait strip. It's an interesting concept and I think it, I think it does have some validity. Uh, I noticed that smaller fish or something down there does want to pull on it. Uh, it dissolves slowly in the water, which is a great thing because you don't want it to be inert. You want it to dissolve so you know it's doing something. So um, I like the product uh, for both of those reasons. It does seem to get a response from fish uh, now, I won't use it when the bite really gets going. I just don't think it's necessary. Uh, but when the bite is really slow or I'm trying to initiate a bite, uh, I'm just experimenting to see whether this product is worth the money. Yeah. Hey, I hope you guys can get out and fish for speckled trout soon or whatever you do. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel if you find these useful.